Hello! A little look at how we could build and randomize items on a bookshelf. Let's talk about the book briefly. It's all low poly, as you can see, made up of a few parts. So I have the inner piece, the cover and the sleeve. They all have separate surfaces. On this sleeve surface, if we take a look at the UV map, there we go, nothing special there, just a UV map for that sleeve. We'll talk about texturing later, but that's basically it for our model. So let's send this to layout. Here's our book. Now let's create our bookshelf. I might turn on headlight first. Hasn't made a massive difference, but anyway, go to items and then we're gonna turn this into instances. So clone, you can just about see it, clone instance here. Let's turn off the original, bring up B for properties, instance generator, so there's our instance. We'll turn it on so we can see it. Excellent. Type, let's just go for a rectangular array. We're gonna use the X axis here. So I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna take the Y instances down to one and the same with the Z. In fact, if you had multiple bookcases, you could probably kill two birds with one stone. By doing that, put an object in between each. But for now, let's keep it easy. So we're gonna keep it on one. We'll increase the instances on the X to fill our bookcase. This will be a good point to add a bit of jitter if needed. Perhaps a little bit of randomness. Stretch, well, I don't wanna distort my UV map particularly, so I'm gonna leave that, but I will under the offset add a little bit of movement there. So nothing too extreme there. Perhaps we'll even take the spacing down a little bit. You want to be careful not to overlay there. And although we're using bullet, I actually will add a bit of offset to that Y spacing there. Okay, so make sure you're happy with the amount of books you have there. Let's close the instance generator down. We're just going to move all the instances up on the Y. We're going to have our base here. So these books will drop down onto it. So we don't need to go too high, just something like that. Now, sadly, bullet and instances don't play together. So we're going to have to bake these instances out to real life geometry. And we're going to do that using the native tool because it's quite straightforward in this case. Let's select the original object that's being instanced and then control shift. And we're going to search for, oh, here it is. It's just off screen. It's called Python bake instance. Now very quickly, that's done exactly what we need. This original object, I'm just gonna delete, remove from scene. Now it looks like I've broken everything because they're all hidden. So let's turn them on. So turn them on for the renderer and let's have a look at them. So here they are. You could always delete this instance generator because it's always handy to have around. But since I've just deleted the object that it's referencing to, it's not much use to me. So I'm just gonna delete it anyway, just to tidy things up. So that's it for the baking process. Next, we're gonna deal with bullet. So let's jump over to the effects tools tab. And we're also gonna bring up the item properties window here to see what's going on. Now, if you already have a pre-made bookshelf, by all means, bring that in, but you don't actually need one for this. Let's create a new null and let's call it shelf. We need to bring this in as a static object. We could do this in this window here, but it's just as easy to go over here and click static body. That conveniently tells us what's going on here with this little box. Now we could scale it here, I think. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go over to the transform and scale it here instead. Don't ask me if there's a difference. I don't know. <laughs> Let's increase these values until it covers the books. So that's clearly not enough. I think this might've been quite a large book to begin with. So that should cover that shelf quite nicely. We'll add the books now. So middle mouse button, let's draw a marquee around those books there. Now what we need for this are rigid bodies. So we'll click on that. And there you can see it's using the mesh as the shape object here, but to speed up calculations, we're not gonna use mesh. We're gonna use box. Just by pressing play, you can see it's leaped straight into action nice and quickly. It's almost real time, it's great. 
That's great for the shelf, but we need to bunch things up and have the books fall over on top of each other. Usual bookcase sort of stuff. How do we do that? Let's create a new null. Let's call it nudge. We'll move to frame one. So there's no calculations going on. Let's move it over here. And for this, we want a kinematic body. Okay, that. Now again, this is for you to play with, but if we go over the transform, and possibly a little taller to cover the height of the books, and perhaps we'll have it a little lower. So that's the left-hand side, and all I'm gonna do is quick copy that, and move a copy of it to the right-hand side. We're all set up. I'm gonna disable dynamics, and I'm gonna add a few keys. So I'm gonna start on this side, And all I'm gonna do is slowly move this up like this. Now, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error here. But the nice thing is it is very responsive. We'll do something similar on the other side we we'll disable dynamics just to get a starting point. A little bit too aggressive at this point, but we have something to begin with. And it's at this point I prefer to open up the graph editor to nudge keys about. Now you probably saw when I was building that up, you got some shredding going on. And that's probably because we need to make the simulation more accurate. So if you are finding you're getting some shredding and some nastiness, pop over to the world tab and turn up the dynamic frame rate. And in this case, because we've got a pretty simple simulation, we can get away with a higher frame rate here. So if you do change that, as you can see, you probably need to change a few parameters accordingly. So let's close bullet down for a second. Obviously it's still simulating. Let's get it to a frame we quite like. So let's say it was something like, something like this frame here. Let's select all of our books, press return and put a keyframe at frame zero. Now it's still simulated based on that starting point. So let's disable the dynamics. And perhaps we'll also need to turn off those draw all bodies. Let's select none. Now we're baked in, but we still have control of each of the objects, should we need to. Quick word on the surfacing. Now obviously this is just one object at the moment. You could quite easily bake this out as an FBX and bring in as one solitary piece. But personally, I prefer to keep it as flexible as possible. So I'm gonna keep it all as one object. So with that in mind, obviously I have one object here. This is how I've gone about texturing each individually. So the sleeve, let's just turn that transparent. So we look at the covers first. Okay, so each cover here, you can see it's got a different color. So for this one, all I've done is taken an item ID and randomized the scalar from zero to one. And between zero and one on this gradient, I've got a few color keys. I've also added an integer here to change up the seed. So obviously I could go in here, change what I want. So that's quite a nice flexible system there. Let's talk about the UVs on the sleeve. So I'll bring that back so we can see them. For the sleeve, I wanted specific order in which the images should show up. Now, if I wanted random, I could just go back to the covers and use that technique, but it's not as straightforward for a specific order. So I've gone third party for this. And again, it's DB and W to the rescue. If somebody knows of a native solution to this, then I'd love to hear it. Please let us know in the description below. But this is the basic setup. So I've got an extended spot info, which takes the clone index which is basically the cloned index of one object. Something like that anyway. <laughs> now I have five images here and I'm also using the db and w vector multi-switcher. Now in this case, I've replaced the gradient 
with this vector multi switcher. I've set it to absolute with the repeating pattern and it just makes it so much easier to use than the gradient. So here's the first one. I've got five images as I say. So for instance, if I want image two here, I just plug it into color two. So this color two and it will repeat based on the repeat setting here. So in order to get the first one to line up, I've had to subtract one from the clone index. We could replace this with an integer and use that to offset your images. So essentially that is that and these DBNW plugins are fantastic. But anyway, that is the bullet bookcase. Again, hope it was of use.